Hey guys, Drudder here. It's March the 17th, 2013. And this is the first video of the year that I'm starting outside. It's a little cold, although it's nice. We've had a very mild winter here in Vancouver, BC, Canada. Uh, I know you, you had it pretty bad in a lot of parts of the US and also in eastern Canada. And other parts of the world have been pretty, pretty rough uh, for weather the last little while with some strange extremes, both hot and cold. But anyhow, here's my tiny little garden patch at the place that I live and uh, just wanted to mention my garlic is up. Planted this last summer actually. Garlic's a weird one. It comes up uh, in the spring after being planted in the summer to fall and then you harvest it again in the summertime. Midsummer. But anyhow, I will be expanding this this year and just I uh, wanted to mention I am going to do garden videos this year again as I have done uh, every year that my channel's been running, but uh, I will mark them with a G or something like that, garden or G or something like that in the title so that you can see that it has something in it to do with um, gardening, tomatoes, uh, that kind of thing, growing your own food. Here's the rhubarb, doing something already. And there's my compost. Looks like my strawberry plants survived the winter. I have uh, seven or eight strawberry plants. Raspberries, cut them back pretty brutally last fall, but they'll come back. And I got two blueberry plants. Buds are out on those. Shadow Stats latest unemployment data is now out. It's from February and it was updated a couple of days ago. We are still just about 23 percent unemployment in the USA and uh, the official numbers down below in red as you can see continue to trend downwards. The US national debt just passed 16.7 trillion US dollars. A very quick look at the long-term silver chart. Of course, here we are still at $29. And we can draw that line that we have drawn many times and see that we're just sitting right on there. That doesn't look good. When you sit on that line for too long, um, you know, we've tested it multiple times and we're just sort of scraping by on that long-term trend line that goes back four years. I don't think it looks really all that good. Um, <laughs> I really don't know what to say. Uh, in light of the whole divergence between the price and the demand, it looks like we could be in for some real troubles in the physical market if the price goes much lower. Uh, but, you know, that almost looks like what is coming. It, it just, I don't know, to me it doesn't look all that great. I'm, I'm optimistic middle to long term. Short term, I, I have no friggin' idea. And you know, if, I, if I had to make a guess, I would say it's probably going to go back to 27. But then again, I've said that for a few weeks, and it's still sitting here. I'm still kind of half expecting a test of 30, but we don't seem to be able to leave that $29 mark at all. And now if we want to switch over to Bitcoin. And yeah, I am aware of how hated Bitcoin is amongst a lot of people. I take sort of an unemotional approach to it. I've always stayed out of the Bitcoin market and seen it as a bit speculative, which I think it is. This is the daily chart. These are each one's a day, and not a lot of days has gone by since Bitcoin was at 17 bucks. This is <laughs> what a few weeks, uh, and here we are. Just made a new high actually about an hour ago, of 53 dollars per Bitcoin, uh, and I think that can go actually a lot higher. That can go into the thousands really. Um, there's nothing stopping it. There's no manipulation holding it down like there is with a lot of other markets. All you can do with Bitcoin is buy. You can't short the Bitcoin market. Um, you can just buy Bitcoins. That's all you can do. So if anyone wants to manipulate this, go ahead, buy Bitcoins. What's that going to do? It's going to push it up. The only way it can be manipulated is upward. Um, so and with all the hype that Bitcoin has been getting lately for making this high of $50, I can see it going to easily a thousand dollars and that could happen within a few days. Uh, we've broken the fifty dollar level here and immediately shot to fifty three. Uh, it could certainly crash and go to almost nothing um, and of course Bitcoin could be outlawed by the government. That's one way they could really deal with it is just to say, ah, you know what? You guys can't do that anymore and that wouldn't be, un you know, it'd be unconstitutional, etc. But whatever, that's just how, <laughs> how they roll. So just got to be careful. Um, but yeah, $53 per Bitcoin, kind of insane. I'm going to continue to stay out of this. I've been watching it since it was, you know, two cents or whatever. And uh, here we are at $53. And I'll just continue to watch it. I don't want to own any Bitcoin. Um, 
but I do think it's an interesting experiment, as I've said before, and I like that it's not centrally controlled. So I've learned about money and about currency, which is, you know, my passion is to learn about money, currency, and the difference between the two. Um, I've learned a lot about it by watching Bitcoin and by learning about Bitcoin. Um, I don't endorse Bitcoin, I'm not buying any Bitcoin myself, and I certainly won't be speculating in it, but uh, it's certainly worth mentioning and certainly worth noting, and I'm probably going to be keeping an eye on that one as well. So, of course, everyone's already heard about this. The Cyprus um, banks are taking 10%, although some people say it's 7%. Uh, depends on how much money you've got, apparently. But they're taking between 7 and 10% of everybody's money. That's just insane. It's just insane. This is money. This is after-tax money. This is money people have sitting there in their hands. This is just this is cash. It's, it's not money, of course. It's currency. But this is this is... These are funds that people have worked for, paid their taxes on already, and now this is supposedly another tax. You can't tax someone's belongings. That's ridiculous. Are they going to be coming into houses and taking people's physical, you know, how much is in your wallet? Oh, I got about a hundred bucks. Oh, okay. You got a ten in there? There we go. Thanks. Bye-bye. Wow. This is just insane. <laughs> insane and no wonder they tried it with Cyprus first it's the smallest part of the EU or the or the eurozone it's it's this it's the very smallest part it makes up about 0.2 percent of the economy in Europe and um, yeah they the banks are all you know super powerful and super gigantic apparently the banks are much larger than the entire economy but um, you know they need more money and they're taking it from the people this time it's you know, <laughs> At least it's more more blatant than uh, um, inflating away their value. They could say, "Well, we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna print off a ton of money and then give it to the banks." That's one way to do it. No, another way apparently to do it is, "Well, we'll just skip that step. You guys have cash. Whoosh, thanks." Anyhow, there's a link down below to this. It's one of the better articles I've read. It's from the BBC, but uh, Zero Hedge has about 30 or 40 different articles on this topic, and I find that site hard to read sometimes just because there's so many articles every day about the same topic, you don't know which one to read. But anyhow, this one seems to have most of the major information, and it was put out just a few hours ago, so check it out if you want a little bit of an update on what's going on in Cyprus. Looks like they're going to extend their bank holiday, which is another way of saying, sorry, we're shut down. Uh, until the end of the week, so it's going to be almost a full week that these people haven't had access to their bank accounts, to the, you know, pay bills, to buy food. That's desperate, you know, that's pretty rough. Um, good luck to anyone down there, um, and anyone in the, in the whole Eurozone as a whole, because this is moving out from here. This isn't just a one-time thing. <laughs> if there isn't a, a, you know, a riot and a total destruction of their government and banking system because of this, well, that's just basically uh, permission to keep doing it, and they will keep doing it. Uh, you know they will. They'll just keep doing it, and that's going to come here too. So when they're done being nice and inflating away the value of your dollar, they'll just come and steal whatever's left. So, you know, I hope you got some something, you know, protection from the banking system, basically. If you have any funds in any kind of paper asset, whether that be just dollars sitting in an account, or a fund, a, you know, a GIC or an RS, RRSP or a 401k or whatever you have in your country uh, that they call savings. It's not. It can be taken from you. And people will say, oh no, it can't. Uh, you know, I read the fine print. It says here that it's guaranteed, it's insured, it's, you know, so, <laughs> so was it in Cyprus. It was exactly the same there. They have all those things in place there. They're a first world nation. They're a developed nation. They are, uh, more developed than Canada and the U.S. in a lot of ways. It's not, some people think it's a backwards little, you know, run-down Zimbabwe or something. No, it isn't. Um, and they had all the protections in place. These people did all their homework and they thought they were protecting themselves by holding their value in, um, you know, paper in different, in different forms. And, of course, it's not. It can be taken from you at a moment's notice. And, in fact, with no notice. You're locked out of your account. You can't get back in. And, meanwhile, while, <laughs> while that's going, we're going to be in there taking your fun your funds, just stealing it right from under your nose. So, just be aware, um, if you're not already, I think most people on this channel are aware, but anything like that is not really yours. It can be taken. And if you think it can't be taken, just look at, I don't know, MF Global? 
All right, just a quick vlog style video today, but uh, I am going to do a video most likely tomorrow on the divergence, and I'm going to analyze it from a few different angles. I found some data on the uh, Canadian silver maples sales, thanks to Endless Mountain, and uh, so I'll be analyzing that as well as gold and different things um, to see if the divergence is even wider than expected. So if you have any input on that, um, go ahead and leave it in the comment section here or email me or send me a private message and uh, I'll take it into consideration before I do my video tomorrow, perhaps Wednesday. And just a quick look at the bison. The back, of course, is much prettier than the front. But there it is, the bison. And uh, it just was released finally from the mint. So I will have that on my website, CanadianSilverBullion.com. All right, guys, that's it for me talk to you probably tomorrow. Oh yeah, just get this set for the next shot. Oh beautiful, that is a beautiful piece of silver. Very nice. Oh shit, I've had a copper spill. Oh.